So for today's video, I want to give some insight on how knowing the notes of the fretboard before you actually play them, actually naming the note in your head, uh, allows you to not necessarily be faster, but more creative. So it, this was the sort of in response to a conversation I was having. And the idea is, if you want, it, it really depends on sort of what the end goal is. If you want to be able to play faster, then really prepared material that you practice and, and, and play with actually very little thought is the best way to sort of build a resourceful bag of licks that are fast. But if you're into the improvisation aspect of uh, playing and you really want to, uh, you know, make something cool on the spot without practice and really challenge yourself for that, then having a system like knowing the names of the notes before you play them and knowing you know your music theory very comprehensively um, really helps you to be able to do that. And then it's the fluency of thought that really becomes sort of your assistant to creating things that could be played fast, could be played slow. And I, I felt like today one of the one of the best ways to demonstrate that would be um, to, you know, I'm just gonna play through a few uh, unaccompanied, no backing track, but I'm gonna play through a few different scales and keys. And I'm just going to change them at will, sort of talk about my way through it. And, you know, if this kind of thing, when you watch someone play like that, you go, uh, you know, what? I wish I could switch around like that and wouldn't have to stop and find my cage system or uh, transpose my shapes or whatever. Right. So um, if that's, uh, if that is interesting to you, then just know that the method I'm using is is nothing but hard work and full commitment to uh, knowing the names of the notes. Okay, so uh, I was thinking I was just playing a little bit before. Let's start with A major pentatonic, almost like an Allman Brothers kind of thing. Right? I've got a lot of gain on. I'm just kind of digging that right now. <laughs> I'll play the E, but I slid around. All right, now how about a G flat major? So my G flat, E flat, B flat, my E flat. Right now I'm actually not even using pentatonic, I'm using diatonic, seven note version of it. Harmonic minor. D fully diminished seven. There's my leading tone right to the C flat. Oh, there's a D flat. I want my E flat. There's my A flat. How about a little B flat seven chord? It's still diminished, I gotta put the B flat in. There we go. B flat seven, how about E flat seven? Now let's get the full shift up to E. A little chromatic shift. Now let's reinforce it. B seven. Now I'm in E, very common guitar E. Uh, we're doing blues right now, so a little major pentatonic. Let's go to the four chord. How about the A? And we'll go dominant seven. A seven, A, C sharp, G. And that E note. There's my E seven. But I'm playing that C sharp, that major pentatonic sound. And now let's go to that big five chord. So uh, I'll show you. And I'll put it in the lead here. B, A, those are two chord tones. Uh, let's go B, A, F sharp, all chord tones at that point. Right, and playing that nice diminished um, triad there. But it's all part of that B7. And within a dominant 7, it is a diminished triad. Just adding that. Right, 
a nice little A7 right there, which is fine. And then instead of returning with the one, like that, which just sounds very nice, let's go to like a um, substitute. Let's go to the six. Let's go to C sharp minor. And actually, let's do C sharp harmonic minor and do modulation. That's so cool. And that B sharp note, literally, the C spelled as B sharp, now brings me into C sharp harmonic minor. Bring it back the G sharp with that B sharp. Just go G sharp seven, C sharp minor. Let's change the voice and let's use the open E because it's in the chord. So now I've got a unison E. I got E and E right here. And now how about this is sort of out of context of the classical version, but you know we'll do a pedal tone as the open E, but we'll stay in C sharp minor. And so now when I go to the, well, let's go to the, yeah, we'll go to four chord. So now F sharp minor with the E, which actually makes F sharp minor seven. Let's sort of like, like be a little tempered with it. Play the C sharp there. And how about A, like A major seven, right? A major nine. See, that's in the key signature. So I could go from that C sharp minor, let's say I'm here. That's a chord tone right there of it. I could even, not the G, don't wanna play that. Let's add the F sharp. This is six of it, still in the, and let's actually make like the F sharp minor, F sharp minor seven, just like we had here. Let's go somewhere, sort of, uh, let's see, uh, let's use this as a leading tone and go very, very dramatic. Let's go with D minor, so an easier key to think about but it's gonna have a chromatic sensibility. Let's use harmonic minor to really bring us into the key. So my D, F, A, B flat, which is a six, pair that flat six with the, with the leading tone in harmonic minor. And then I'm starting to get the diminished seven chord, so that's giving me a dominant function. Now my C sharp is acting differently when I'm playing it. Now and a big D minor chord. And one of my favorites, uh, how about the uh, Neapolitan six, the uh, E flat major, which is a flat two chord in first inversion um, in the key of D minor. Gotta play that E flat. Let's play the G, it's in the chord, so I can go. Uh, no, not that. And, you know, it's sort of typical move. Let's go to the five. And then, let's use parallel major in D major. Add that F sharp. So something, but let's end with the big chord. First inversion, right? So the idea is that as I have the fluency, the command here, I can play whatever I can think of and be as creative as I want without sort of running into pattern after pattern after pattern. And I can use patterns whenever I want. So this gives you some insight. Please feel free to send me a message uh, if you would like my help with your playing. Thanks.